have that video as well. In the first week of Advent, we light the candle of hope, or the prophecy candle. From Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 6. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. understand what God has done for us. I mean, most people during this time are thinking about what can I get my loved ones for Christmas? But to think that in, in the very beginning God thought of us, what we needed most, you know, what we needed most was a Savior. How many know that you can't save yourself? You can't save yourself. There's no other name under heaven in which man must be saved. His name is Jesus. And to think about the times that we're living in, I'm telling you what, we need Jesus more than ever. Come on, you need Jesus more than ever. I mean, to stop looking at other things to fulfill you or to give you happiness or to give you the joy or to give you that satisfaction or to give you that oh something I oh ah. there's got to be more I'm telling you what when we begin to take a hold of him and he begins to take a hold of us nothing is impossible Church say that nothing, nothing is, impossible is impossible when I take hold of him. Amen. Amen. You know, just out of the meetings that we had with uh, Greg Rich Ministries and just understanding that, you know, everything is changing. Everything is changing. Anybody ever think about where you grew up at and then you go back and well there's no longer Texaco that's gone you know just some of the places there's no longer Sefer there's, there's no longer my favorite pizza where I used to work at it's a bank now or it's yes that's what it is there but you go back and you look and you see changes Things are always changing. Why is that? Why, why does everything have to change? How many, you know, tell us about the good old days. You know, people want to go back and, and think, oh, you know, if I could just live during this era of time or this. I mean, they had their problems too. People sometimes think all oh, the good old days. And then they stop thinking about the good day today, while it's called today, that I can have not only a good day, I can have a great day. Absolutely. I can have a blessed day. I mean, I can have sunshine. I'm walking on sunshine. Amen. Anybody remember that song? I'm walking on sunshine. I'm walking in the lights. See, but we've got to get our, our thinking. We've got to get our, our, our whole being in that place of understanding things will change. It can either be for the better or for the worse. What do you want? I want for the better. I don't want to change for the worse. But it's it's 
it falls on me because God changes not. Why, why doesn't God change? You know, because sometimes we have thought, God, you need to change. God, you need to change with the times. God, you need to be more inclusive. See, God can't be inclusive with darkness, with sin. See, that's, that's what we've got to grab a hold of. And I want to start off in 1 John chapter 1, 5, 6, and 7, because the answer is really simple why God doesn't need to change. Did you want to hear it? Yes. He's perfect. How many know you don't need to change perfection? Any of you all perfect? <laughs> Not even close, Lord. I'm just here to tell you, even the Apostle Paul said, I'm the chief sinner, but nevertheless, I am what I am by the, the grace of God. See, the grace of God is towards us this morning. God's unmerited favor is towards you this morning, even in our willful disobedience. You know, sometimes we don't like to hear that. Oh, my good house. Well, see, we're going to look at some things that God doesn't need to change because he's perfect. When you think that God says a thousand years is like a day with him, can you grasp that? <clears throat> a thousand years like a day you ever just meditate on that and try to chew that up and, and I think you know why because he's perfect he's 100% perfect he says to be perfect just like your heavenly father did you know he said that be perfect like your heavenly father in your dealings with with, with ministering or or living your life in such a way that, that you're ministering grace to the hearer. Some of us can care less what we minister to others because we really don't think about it. But how many know we need to think about it? How many know we, we need to think about how am I acting or, or what am I saying or what am I doing? What am I thinking? Have you ever heard that? What are you thinking? You know, when, when I hear that, you know, I, I look to myself and think, stupid. I mean, yeah, what are you thinking? I guess I wasn't. But how many know that we are to be thinkers? The whole part of, of, of renewing your mind is rethinking. He, he, he says in Romans 12, he says, I beg you by the mercies of God that you present your body a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable duty. And no longer be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How many know that you and I can know the perfect will of God for our lives? Yeah. All we have to do is present ourselves to him. Stop conforming to this world. How many know the world is in darkness? There's nothing that you want to conform to the world. But how many know that we should be conforming to the light? The light, the truth. More like Jesus. I mean, we can sing a song, but can we live it out? We can, but there has to be some changes. Not in God. Just because you... If, if we don't judge him rightfully or, or judge him in the right light, doesn't mean that he's still not God, that he's still not perfect. Because sometimes we can look and see, well, that's unjust and that's unfair in our thinking. But the thing that we have to realize in God, there is no darkness. Amen. And if people are living in darkness, see, our sin has separated us from our God. See, that's what it says. Our sin, our wrongdoing. When, when, when we step out of the light, we step into the darkness and we allow, we give the devil opportunity in our lives. See, you know, as, as a believer, you don't have to yield to darkness anymore. 
Wow, I got one head shaking. <laughs> See, you know and I know God doesn't need to change. I need to change. You need to change. And when is it going to start? Faith is always now. Now. It starts now. Start the clock. Lord, I'm going to live by faith. I'm going to live by the word. I'm going to live in the light. I'm going to live by the truth if it kills me. Did you know the apostle Paul lived by the truth? And it killed him. But he was all right with it. <laughs> he was all right with it. Listen to me. He was all right with it. He says to die is gain. See, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Stop living beneath what the word says about you. See, you've got to be willing to change. If you're not willing to change and you refuse to change, that's just telling me you love darkness more than the light. See, that's the condemnation. He said, I, I, I didn't come to condemn you. I, I've come to save you. But this is the condemnation. That they love darkness rather than the light. And they don't want to be reproved. Or they don't want to be uh, acknowledge their wrongdoing. How many know that when you acknowledge your wrongdoing, it's called repentance? And then God can get involved? But if you acknowledge that you've done nothing wrong, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Eh. See, stop justifying yourself because that's what the devil does. He's a liar. Sometimes we don't even know that we're lying to ourselves. Hallelujah. I haven't even read a scripture yet. <laughs> you know, by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God knows each and every one of us. How many know the devil is a liar? How many know that Jesus defeated the devil? How many know that he, he, he saved Paul, Saul, Paul, and, 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 and gave him a mission to go open the eyes of those who were in darkness to bring them into the light from the power of Satan to the power of God to give them an inheritance my goodness, don't you want your inheritance? Yeah. Do you understand what an inheritance is? Yeah. I mean, we would go, oh, I got a rich uncle. Man, he left me $5 million. Woo! I mean, you'd be all excited. You'd be... <laughs> I mean, you'd be dancing. You would be, I didn't even know he, I, I didn't even know he existed. And he left this to me. Do you understand what Jesus has left to us? I mean, it's, it's so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come that you might have life now to the fullest. I'm, I'm bringing you light in a dark place. How many times you, you just, man, it's just, I, I seem like I'm in a dark place. How did I get here? I'm just telling you, God didn't put you there. Okay. You took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. That's from growing up. It's it Bugs Bunny, but you remember that one. But some of us, it doesn't matter how you got there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of the darkness. Get into the light. No devil, no demon can stop you. See, Jesus defeated the devil. But Jesus said something in John 8. I, I am going to read this scripture still. Okay? I'm just trying to be led by the Spirit of God. How many here you want me to be led by the Spirit of God? He, he, he says that the devil is the father of lies. And he says you want to do the will of your father. I'm telling you what, let's, let's not do the will of the devil. Let's, let's, let's be wise enough. Let's, let's wake up. See, see, light will expose darkness. 
Did you know that? Light will expose darkness. So if there's things in our life that need to be exposed, that, that, that need to be gone, then, then there has to be a dealing with ourself. There has to be coming to that place where, Lord, you, you know, you didn't place me here. I placed myself here by listening to the devil. And I don't want to be in this place any longer. Anybody ever been in a place before? Man, I can't wait to get out of here. Hopefully it's not here because this is where the truth is being preached. But sometimes, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, how do you remember the first time you came to a place where it was spirit filled and man, it just, it seemed real uncomfortable. And you know why, right? Because there was things in your life that needed to change. Come on. Been there, done that. You're squirming all that word to be in preached all. Just, but you stayed and, you, and it began to just, that breakthrough. Help me hear you want a breakthrough in your life. Amen. See, God can give you breakthrough today. Light overpowers darkness. And it's like there, and he, he says that simply in, in John 8, if you back up, he, he says, you know, if you abide in my word, my words, you know, you'll know the truth. And the truth will do what? It'll set you free. If you abide in my words, if my word abides in you, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. See, that's the whole key. Stay in the light. Stop getting out of the light. Stop running into darkness. Stop running to things that add nothing to your life. It takes away the very core of your relationship with Jesus. Now I'm going to read it. Okay. He, he says, this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. At all. See, the reason why God doesn't change, the, the world needs to change because it's full of darkness. It's full of sin. It need, the world needs a savior. The, the world needs to believe on the Lord Jesus. The world needs to get out of, out of sin, out of darkness, out of that power of Satan. And they need to come into the, the, the light and the power of God's kingdom. Because if they stay in the darkness, they'll be lost. They'll be lost. And it'll be their own doing. He says this is the condemnation. That light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light. So we got to love the light. Light of the world stepped out of darkness. I remember that song. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. See, it's, it's learning, learning for us to submit our life to Jesus. What, what what better thing do you have than that? Nothing. Honestly, there, there, there's nothing better than learning to submit your life. Lord, to bow down to you. Lord, you know everything. I know nothing. I don't want to be in the dark. I want to be in the light. I want to be in the truth. And he goes on to say, now I'm going to keep reading this. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. Now listen. We lie and do not practice the truth. I mean, that can be, ooh. Yeah, it can be an ouchie. But how many know that word is true? If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Now, I know something about practice. Being a coach. I want the kids there to practice, to get better at what we're doing. How many know that we've got to get better by coming and hearing and hearing the word of faith? There's something about practicing the truth of God's word. Being a part of a team, part of a fellowship. Because if you read in Ephesians, it, it, it talks about everybody doing their parts. On a team, you know, that's what you're practicing to do your part. To do your part. So what are we practicing? So he goes on to say, but if we walk in the light as he is the light, I love this part. We have fellowship with one another 
And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Oh. Now, that word fellowship, what do you think we're doing right now? Oh, See, fellowship means coming together over him. Coming together. Fellowshipping. See, when people stop fellowshipping, it just tells me you don't even realize it. The devil's trying to pull you into that dark. I got him. Well, every time I go, that preacher keeps, I get offended at him. I don't sing my favorite songs. Nobody said hi to me. I mean, all different kinds of reasons that are not good that keep you in the dark. How many here you like to be in the dark? I didn't know nothing. I was, I was in the dark on it. I, you know. See, see, there's no wisdom in being in the dark. That's right. well, it's not my fault. I didn't know. Uh, it's your fault because he says to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So you, 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 you can't play stupid with God. You can't play dumb with God. I didn't know. <coughs> not my fault. Well, <laughs> come on. All of us have to look inward and say, Lord, am, am, am I staying in the light? Am, am, am I staying in fellowship? Let me read this again to you because it, it's got to hit home. It's got to have place in our heart, that last. But if we walk in the light, how many know when you're walking in the light? I mean, you know it. I mean, that's your meditation. I mean, you're, you're man, you can't... I, Lord, this truth and that truth. And, oh, you know. Whew, yeah. I mean, you get like overwhelmed with just the goodness of God. And, and it's like, man, Lord, this is refreshing. This is, it's like crickets for me. It should never be crickets for anybody. Yeah, well, what I get is what I get here. Come on. If this is all that you're getting... You're probably not in fellowship. You're probably not in that place where you need to be. He says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. All sin. I mean, think about that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From everything. I mean, you once we leave here, it's like it's like the, the devil is going to try to steal the word out of your heart. He's, he's going to try to get you in the darkness. He's going to try to get you fighting. I mean, he's going to try to get you at one another. He's, he's, he's going to try to get you to think on wrong thoughts. Wrong thoughts. As a man thinks, so is he. How many know if you think wrong, you're wrong? But if you think right, you're in the right. A sound mind. See, God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I have a sound mind. My, my, my will, my emotions, my soundness, I, I, I have that. But it's by the renewing of my mind, the transforming, <coughs> not conforming. Not conforming to this world. How many know the world wants to just tell you lies after lies after lies after lies? And get you to believe it. So don't do it. Don't do it. Was that, was that all of them? Six and seven? That's all of them. We can go home now. But I'm not releasing you yet. Because I'm not done. If you're taking notes... John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 12, 46 says this, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me shall not abide in darkness. See, when you believe on the Lord Jesus, you won't abide in darkness. Amen. I mean, you won't stay in that place. You'll begin to change. Oh, you'll begin to change and that's what we all need to do we, we need to begin to change Colossians 1 13 says he has delivered us from the power of dark 
from the power of darkness and transferred or translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm wanting you to get this truth that, that God in him, there is no darkness at all. The word darkness means this, to err, to be disobedient, willful blindness, closing your eyes to God's truth, rebellion, Gloom and doom. How many here want that for Christmas? Not me. I, I don't want any darkness at all. Hallelujah. It means evil. It means sin. It means moral depravity. Lack of God's truth. Lack of spiritual perception. To cover or blind with ignorance. Have you ever heard some of man? He lived a rough life. Boy, I just, he lived a rough, rough life. Boy named Sue. <laughs> Remember first time hearing that song and thinking, what? What is this song about? You know, the whole moral to the story was made him tough and rough because he wasn't going to be there. Well, Dad, you missed it. You know, you forget about Dad, if you would have just stayed home and raised your son right, you you could have called him, named him Bob. <laughs> John. But sometimes the world thinks, ah, oh, you know, I did you good. I raised you rough. How I many know God doesn't do that with us? God will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. He's never leaving even if we deny him, he can't deny himself. He's always ready. I mean, you can't help but think of the prodigal son. He's always ready if we'll get ready. Anybody ever get to the place and you just decide I'm not getting ready? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going. I'm just going to stay home. I'm just going to stay in this darkness. I'm just going to just stay home. I'm not, I'm not going to get ready. How many know the Lord says for us to get ready? How many know the Lord wants us to embrace him? He, he wants us to come to our senses. Oh my goodness. To come to that place where we know how to reason. I'm here eating pig's food. I'm in a bad place. But I guess there's nothing I can do about it. That's sometimes, that's a lie of the devil. That's a lie of the devil. Say that. That's a lie of the devil. See, he says, if you'll come to your senses, pick yourself up and go back to your father. See, he had, he had determined in his heart, I'm not worthy any longer to be his son. I've wasted my inheritance. I've messed up royal. Anybody ever feel like that? I've messed up royal. But in God, who is rich in mercy, see, coming to our senses, get out of that darkness, get out of that pit, get out of that place of torment, get out of that place where, where, where the truth is, is being held down. The truth is being suppressed. Get, get out of there. Get out of there. Man, I'm leaving that place. I'm going home. I'm going back to the Father. I'm going to see if he'll have mercy on me. How many know that when he was afar off? He ran. He wasn't. I told you so. I told you. Aren't you glad God's not that kind of God? I told you so. Even though he has told us so. But see, when we get to that place, and, and we get to that place, I'm tired of living in the dark. I'm tired of living in the pit. I'm tired of the devil holding me down. I'm getting out of there, and I'm going back to the Father to see what he'll do. Hallelujah. We know what he did. He's running. Sprinting, I bet you. I mean, remember that. I can remember when 
my brother Stan got uh, out of the service. I remember being, we, we lived in Millwood and they had a big slide. And I thought, he, you know, a certain time, so I'm up on that slide. I want to be the first to see him. I waited and waited and waited. I didn't realize there was a call came in. He, he's, he's been delayed. So I was over there waiting probably about three hours on that slide. So I found out the day when he's coming. So I'm back up there. I'm, here I see that blue gremlin coming around the corner. Boy, I slide down that and I'm running. I'm running home. And it's like Tim Brace, my brother, because he, you know, what he meant to all of us, what, what he, he brought to us. And it's like to, to run and have, have that, I, I have that understanding of the father running to somebody that he loves. Amen. See, see you, you got to understand that God loves you. You've got to have that understanding. Even if you're in the dark, he loves you. He wants you to get out of there and come home. And come home. See, he hasn't changed his mind about that. He hasn't changed his mind about you. He loves you. He, and he embraced his father. And his father, he says, you know, we're going to party it up. We're going to rejoice. My son was once lost. Now he's found. He was once dead. Now he's alive. Hey, put a good robe on him. Put, put, put one of those finest robes on him. Come on, put, put, new, put, put some sandals on his feet. He, he's been out there feeding pigs. You don't need those muddy sandals. Put some new ones on him. Here, give him the ring, give him that crest that wherever he goes, that, that everything that I have belongs to him. That ring meant that he could go anywhere. Just roll it. Can you imagine having that ring that represents God? Everything that God has is yours. Everything that he has is yours. Why wouldn't you want to be in the lights? Why wouldn't we want to just run home? Once you find out, man, I've been duped, I've been deceived, I'm getting out of there. I'm not staying there. I'm, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. We need to come home. We need to get in the lights. See, in James, James chapter 1, i got to read this to you because this is important. And I need it in the Amplified, James 1, 17 and 18. See, God doesn't change. He hasn't changed his mind about you, even if, if you stay in darkness. His, his heart towards you is love. Just, just like the prodigal son's father, his heart was always for his son, but the son had to make the decision. See, see the father couldn't make him do anything. He came to his father, give me my inheritance. He gave him his inheritance. He went out and he wasted it. I mean, do you think that was the father's will? For him to take that and waste it? No. But see, God has created us with the ability to choose. So you can choose whatever you want to choose. You can choose the darkness or you can choose the light. He's not going to stop you with what your choice. <coughs> but I pray that you'll choose lights. He says, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights, the creator and sustainer of the heavens, in whom there is no variation, no rising or setting, or shadow cast by his turning. For he is what? And what? Changing. Never changing. How many know that 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 if, if you just turn just slightly, it, it can cast a shadow? See, God, God's not turning from his word. Not, not even a little bit. See, when 
when people begin to call God unfair and unjust and, 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 and state things that, that are just, you know, the statement, love is love. No, God is love. Love is not love. God is love. In him, there's no darkness. How many love is love pertains to wrongdoing? Did you know that? I mean, if, 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 if you're alive, I mean, you, you, you know that, that that saying is not the truth. But people want to live by that truth. They want to live by that truth, and that's not even truth. And they want to say, well, if God judged that, he's unjust. No, in him there is no sin at all. In him there is no darkness at all. In, 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 in him there, there, there's nothing wrong with God. He's perfect in every way. And yet we want to call God wrong. Or we want to judge him in the light of how we want to live our lives. But he has already set the boundaries. Right. He's already set, just like he set the oceans. It can't go any further because that's how God created it. And for us as the church to understand that, don't live in the darkness. Get out of the darkness. Get into the light. You know, in Romans, I don't know if I put that up there, Romans 1. I'm going to read it to us. How many know it would be a good thing to read your word? Because it is the truth. This is what it says in Romans 1.16. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. To everyone who believes. How many know that everybody can come out of the darkness? See that whole part that like a thousand years is like a, a day with God. He, he said, and then he, he, he goes on in the next scripture. He, he, he says that, you know, some of you think that God is slack in what he has said, but you know, you, you, you've misjudged him. What, what he is, he's, he's patient with us. He's long suffering with us. He, he's not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance, all to come into the knowledge of the truth. See, God, God is giving us time to, 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 to make that decision to repent and come home. Amen. Amen. See, that's a good change. Coming out of the darkness is a good change. But he says here, he says, for the Jew first and also for the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. He says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth or hold it down in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God, it is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible <clears throat> attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. See, it's important for us to acknowledge God in our lives. It's important to realize we're in a relationship with him. How many of you are glad you're in a relationship with Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God to the image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleansedness and the lust of their heart. See, God will allow you to do whatever. He's not going to force you to do anything. See, what I'm preaching to you today you're going to make up your mind whether you believe it or not. And you're going to make that decision. Am I going to come into the light? Am I going to change? Or am I going to stay the same place where I'm at? I'm telling you what, more of Jesus in my life. Hallelujah. You want to see more of Jesus in my life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he says, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever, amen, 
For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the nature use of the woman, burning in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error. See, that's what darkness is, error. In darkness, of which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Now, we need to get that down. We should love. I want to retain. I want to grab a hold of this. I don't want to let go of the truth of God's word. I want it to burn in my heart. I want it to be in my mouth. See, I want to believe this and speak it. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge, gave themselves over to debased minds or undisciplined minds to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve those who practice them. Now we're talking about practicing righteousness. We're talking about practicing the truth. See, you've got to be in the light to do that. See, so you can't practice what's right if you don't come to practice. If you don't come to the fellowship, if you don't come, if you don't allow this word to have place in your heart, you'll never change how God intended for you to change. See, God doesn't need to change. He's perfect. We're not. We need to change constantly. In a world that we live in, it's constantly changing. I mean, you see it. I see it. I mean, I know, I mean, it, 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 it seems like sin is abounding. I mean, it seems like darkness is abounding. But grace is abounding much more. Amen. See, God's grace towards you is towards you. But you got to come to your senses. Right now, right, right where you're at, you know you've been in darkness. And you want to get out of it. Doesn't matter what, but you know, I want you to stand to your feet. You want to get out of it. You don't want to be held by it. Hallelujah. Come on, it, it, the Bible says to judge ourselves. If we'll judge ourselves, we won't be judged. But if we don't judge ourselves, then it falls on you. You have to be to pay for it. Thank you, Jesus. See, the whole thing that God will give repentance to those that acknowledge their wrongdoing. See, God gets involved when we are honest with him. See, that's what it means to humble oneself. To humble oneself today. That's what we're doing. We're humbling ourselves. And God is going to bring you up out of that. God is going to bring you up out of that. How do I know that? Because God promises. He says that if, if we'll turn to him, he says, as you draw near to me, I draw near to you. I'll empower you. Father God, I thank you for each and every person that is standing on their feet. Father, they're, they're acknowledging, Lord, their, their, their Lord, desire for the light, for the truth. Lord, to not be held down by the darkness, Lord, for the lies and the deceptions. And Father, I thank you for setting them free today. Lord, whom the Son sets free is free today. That they'll be free from, from these things that have been holding them back. Lord, of more of what you have for them. More of what you have for them. Father, I thank you that light will overpower right now these, these things, these darkness, these things, Lord, that have held them back. Father, those chains would be broken in Jesus' name, those chains would be broken today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to, to bring to light, to bring to their knowledge, Lord, of, of the truth. That truth that will set them free, Lord, and, and help them to live in the light. 
Father, I thank you that strong, Lord, they'll have a desire. Father, that they'll desire you more than anything. Lord, that they'll hunger and thirst for righteousness. Lord, that they'll seek you like they've never sought you before. Lord, that they'll press into you like they've never pressed before. And Lord, I thank you for showing them things to come. Showing them things to come. Father, I thank you for answering this prayer. I thank you, Lord, for that mercy and that grace and that forgiveness. Father, that fellowship, as you said, cleansing. Cleansing the believers. Cleansing the believers right now. Making them whole. Sound, 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 and whole. Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. See, I'm going to let you out. Things can change for the better, or things can change for the worse. It's up to you what you want. And I believe that, you know, according to our faith, let it be to us. And I believe according to your faith, according to your actions, it's to you. So walk in him. Live in him. I'm telling you what, whatever you do in word or deed, do it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Did you get something today? Yes. Amen. Well, let's go out and let's shine. Let's be in the light. Amen. Amen. Greet one another in a spirit of love.